Good evening. My name is Judy Orcutt. Uh, my business name is Quilligraphy, and my presentation is from left brain to right brain. Okay, there we go. That's my left brain slide. That's the only one. I graduated from Temple University School of Pharmacy. I practiced pharmacy and sold drugs for 40 years in the York uh, community with uh, long-term care and in retail environment and as a consultant in the field. I was an artist trapped though. I started doing photography to start <clears throat> showing my, it, um, myself. Uh, this was Garvine Mill down near Felton. Uh, this image has been on a book cover. Um, I went out in the county, York County, and drove around and got images from places like this one in Manchester. I would stop at the local post office and ask them the best looking barns around and I ended up with almost 300 slides of York County barns. Uh, the York County is so beautiful in this rural makeup and I, I love that so much. This was a slide at Siesta Key. I love this slide because of the silhouetting of the bike rider, the fact that he's riding into the picture and then to go out. There's a child playing there and a ball and the backlighting of the sun. This to me is one of my favorite photographs. Now I'm into my calligraphy, which is a line of cards where I do calligraphy and press flowers. I make my own ink. I press all my own flowers. I do the original piece and then I make a scan and then I have a digital image that I can convert into note cards. I have about 160 different note cards. Uh, this is one for Olivia's house that I did <coughs> that they sent out to people that had donated to them. The, all those flowers were from Olivia's house. That's a real butterfly specimen too. Um, I wholesale my cards. I also sell locally at the Gardner of Owl Valley and I sell with Etsy. Uh, this is all cards, or flowers rather, from my backyard, except for the Spanish moss, which is from Georgia, my son's backyard, and uh, based on a ba uh, music background. This has been one of my better sellers. Uh, so these are the way my cards are presented. They come in a, a little sleeve, and uh, I have them for all different occasions. And uh, it's kind of a niche market because nobody sends cards anymore. And I realized at that point I had to come up with something different. Um, so it took me a long time to do that. Um, in the meantime, I'm putting the names on the back of all the cards of the flora that's on the cards. This is a very long process. I only do it when I print again, and then I get the image uh, that on there. So it'll take a long time. But uh, I thought it gave more uh, information and um, to the flowers. Okay, now I'm into my scanner photography. Moving on. And this I did first for bridal bouquets, and the idea was to preserve the bridal bouquet and how it looked and, and have a memory of this beautiful, beautiful flower. The way I do scanner photography is I put the flowers face down on the scanner. I adjust the light so it comes up through the scanner, and then if nothing, it's not right, it, it shows on the computer, I have to think upside down in order to change it because the flowers were face down and if it's not right then I have to think face up in order to do the face down. <laughs> so it gets rather complicated. Uh, this is dogwood and red maple uh, from my front yard and you have to do a lot of work in Photoshop when you do these because there's an awful lot of debris that lands on the, uh, the scanner. Uh, these are garlic scapes and I like them so much because they kind of take their own design. They're kind of curly and uh, I really do like them, uh, and I tasted some of the ones that I got, and I like them that way too. I got these at Central Market. Another scanography. This is one of my favorites with the poppies, and um, it's just so vibrant. When when these are done, they are so vibrant, more so than any photograph could make them. And I print them out, or have them printed out on metal, which makes them even more vibrant. They just they pop. And when they're printed out on metal, they can be hung on the wall. Now I'm into my, my love now, and that is doing photo encaustics. 
The pear is a photo image. And I put the wording in, and then I started applying the medium. The medium is made from beeswax and Damar resin. Those two are combined together. They have to be heated, and there is a lot of fumes. You have to do this in, in I'm just starting it again, because uh, I couldn't work in my garage. It was too cold. So that's a tree that was printed on tissue paper and then applied to the board, which already had the medium on twice, and you fuse each time with a, a, a gun, a heat gun, or a, a, a propane torch. This is a picture of my mother on her wedding day in 1924. Um, I made it more of a black and white. The picture was not totally black and white. But I made it more of a black and white, and I brought up the image so that I could use it. So I put it down on the boards and then started applying the wax over it. And you add color in as you go. And I didn't know what I would end up with sometimes until I really got into it. And um, it's a great way to preserve art because this is heritage art. This is what they used in the Egyptian tombs, and the art is still available in the Egyptian tombs. It's impervious to water. It will last forever. So if you have any old photographs around, you want me to do this to you, you've got to let me know. I would be delighted to do that for you. So uh, that's my another one of my mother. I did about four different ones. I gave two of them to my sons, and I kept two. One right now is in York Art Association, and I have another one on my dining room table. But it was a great uh, pleasure to do that because I learned the different ways. I was taking an advanced class.